I don't know. I don't know what to say here. I don't have anything nice to say here. And a clipper. Put some prep in your step. Mother Hey everyone, welcome to Pink Table Talk, second edition of Quick Critique. We got quite a few pictures today to talk about. First, we have a little Bichon kind of looking thing. Cute little girl, I think. And the groomer is being creative with the face trim because from what I understand, the dog doesn't have an eye. I appreciate the creativity, which is always great. I'm sure the mother loves what you do to cover the eye that's missing. Overall, the haircut could be better and look a little more finished with a better Prep, as I always say, better prep is always a good idea. I mean, fluffing and separating the coat would be great for you to have a good finish. The ears don't look symmetrical, not symmetrical, they're not symmetrical, and I'm sure it's on purpose. But this to me is not cool. Sometimes asymmetry is cool. This doesn't look cool because it doesn't work together. So what I would do, I would either grow one ear really long, the one that's on the side where the dog is missing an eye, along with that little piece that goes over the eye into one asymmetrical kind of longer side. If you want to shave the other ear, that would look, the extreme difference between two sides works a lot better on trims like that. I do like the feet, especially back feet. They look really nice. Good idea. Props. Okay, our next dog is a Bedlington Terrier. Well, uh, the groomer says she or he, could be a he, has been grooming the dog for six months and struggling with the crest and lines on the face. I'm not sure what lines on the face are we talking about. If, it, if it's clipper lines or the shape of the face lines. But the shape of the face I can't see because there is no picture of the face straight up. The clipper lines um, are not sharp enough uh, as I could see. Um, the ear looks really good. The clipper work on the ear is great. The face, I can't really see where the lines are. They're kind of melted into the top of the head and the muzzle, which on the Bedlington, um, they should be sharp and visible, nice, sharp, straight lines and visible, where um, you're gonna have a line from top corner of the ear to the outside corner of the eye, according to the dog or structure of the head. You can adjust the lines going a little higher or a little lower, but that's your main line that goes from top corner of the ear to the outside corner of the eye. Then the line should go from corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. And then everything underneath that line is completely shaved, nice and clean and short. So here I don't see the sharp lines. Uh, and I, as I already said, the ear is shaved nice and clean and uh, tassel is in the right place, so that's really nice. I could also see the throat line that I'm loving. Nice clean lines, ends where it's supposed to end. Very nice job. This um, breed is very difficult to scissor, and from what I can see, your scissor work on the Bedlington looks really nice as well. Um, so keep on working, and if you could also Send us a picture of a face in one side, the other side, straight up and from the back. Then I could definitely talk more about the uh, lines on the face. The crest. The crest, um, your neck looks long enough so you understand the breed standard that says long neck. Uh, one thing I could say, and I don't see anything wrong with the crest except it could be just a little bit shorter or smaller, but one thing that I could see could be definitely changed is the highest point of his head is way too much forward. It should be right in the middle, uh, on the line or on the level of center of the ear. If you take your finger and right on the flat ear and 
kind of draw it straight up, that's your highest point. What I can see here, your highest point is about an inch further than it's supposed to be. So hope this helps. We're gonna go straight to our next victim here. It's little cutie, Shih Tzu mix. Um, let me bring this up and larger so I can see the detail. There's not much before and after difference, but I've, obviously I could see uh, that this little munchkin had a haircut. Again, dog looks clean, but not fluffed out. Around the mouth is not clean enough. So you don't have that fluffed out, clean, powder puff appearance. The ears, different shape, different length a little bit. The whole outline and the little teddy bear on this dog is really cute. I think you're trying to do an Asian muzzle, which is not quite there yet. In order for you to have that essence of an Asian muscle, muzzle, you would have to take the chin much shorter than this. I would probably take a five blade and take it right off just the bottom of the face and leave all that half moon on top of the muzzle fuller and scissor it into a round kind of muzzle. Next is English Cocker. The groomer has an issue with transition into feathering on the ribs and the rear leg. Honestly, this is a really nice job on this dog. Beautiful job. And I don't see any issues with transition into feathering on the ribs. I actually like it very much. It's in the right place, it's got the wave. I like it. The back leg could use a little more carding work or co the coat needs to be worked a little bit better into the feathering, but not much. So I myself like the groom very much and that transition looks to me like it doesn't need much work. So all I have to say is great job. What I would work on on this trim is the front of the front leg. It needs a little more work on pulling a little more hair or carding a little more hair. And I'm not saying going all the way to the skin. I'm saying make it a, look a little more neat, especially on the side of the leg. Because it looks like if I would look at this dog straight up, uh, her or his elbows would be out and the legs would be outside of the body instead of being close to the body. That's what I can see. Otherwise, great job. All right, here's a standard poodle. She's a work in progress. Working her into a mushroom top knot, working, looking for critique on balance and ideas for how to make her look the cutest. And any tricks on getting dye out, unfortunately not. The only thing you could do is wait until the hair grows out underneath the dye and just, just cut it off. So I'm gonna assume that the groomer is looking for a critique on the head balance and making her look cute because I honestly cannot see anything else. Uh, there's no profile picture and dog is not standing on one picture. So I am gonna talk about the head only. If I'm looking, if I was looking at a dog like this and trying to work on the face or what you call the mushroom head, I would definitely grow more ear hair and bring it up, scissor on the bottom of the ear every time you groom the dog. Um, so your top of the head goes, flows into the ear seamlessly. So it's kind of one piece. To me, making her look cuter or the cutest, I would grow her muzzle out and scissor the muzzle in some kind of a cute round shape instead of having a poodle shaved face. Poodle shaved face, in my opinion, is not cute. It could be beautiful, it's beautiful, but it's not cute. Cute should have a little more hair. And obviously, um, you, you, the mushroom head needs to have 
the top on top of the eyes scissored. I could see it's tied up in the bow right now, but if we're talking true real HCC or mushroom head, that needs to be scissored in order to look correct. So yes, I would say grow the muzzle out and scissor around the eyes and make the top of the head seamlessly go into a little fuller ear. Shorter, but fuller. Okay. Doodle. Doodle. Okay, I'm going to make it larger so I can see. Okay, again. I want to see a better prep again. This is, this dog could look so much better and so much smoother if there was proper fluffing going on. Also, from a side view, I can see a full of hair. I don't know if the owner asked you not to shave the that would be okay, but if that would be a part of basics or prep, I definitely see way too much hair on your Nice, neat feet, love those. The face is not symmetrical. So the right side of the dog is longer than the left side of the dog. On the muzzle part that goes from the eye forward. Now, when we look from the eye up, the left side of the dog looks longer than the right side of the dog. So what I usually do, my suggestion would be, is to start from my uncomfortable side. If you're a righty, start from the left side. If you're a lefty, start from the right side. Once you get that side kind of shaped and get the length in, then look at the dog straight up and try to match your comfortable side to the uncomfortable side. That's how you get most symmetrical faces. So I hope you see that and I hope that tip helps you. And please pay attention to prep, everyone, everyone, all of you. Mom wanted a more rounded beard, so this is a Wheaton Terrier. I'm not sure if this haircut is before or after, actually. Uh, it doesn't look like a Wheaton Terrier. I don't see a rounded beard. I see a squared beard. Uh, so... Gotta have a better prep. I just can't really critique this because it doesn't look like it's been groomed. So we could probably ask this person to go take a lesson on the Wheaton Terrier. I don't know. I don't know what to say here. I don't have anything nice to say here. Yeah, the I'm sorry, guys. What do you want me to do with this? Uh, we have... Um, a pet trim, maybe a teddy bear trim on, looks like a poodle mix of some kind. I'd say maybe Lhasa Poodle, Shih Tzu Poodle, I don't know. But it's a mix that we get in our salons every day. It's a nice, neat pet trim uh, that we do in the salon every day. And again, the muzzle looks greasy, the ears look greasy, and clipper marks all over the dog. Now... If you want to do a really quick haircut with just the clippers, it's totally fine. Nobody has two hours to scissor all over the dog. I get that. But when you prep the coat correctly and you use your clippers correctly on the clean fluffed out coat, it does not have as much clipper marks as this dog has in his coat. So clarifying shampoo for a bath, Absolutely no conditioners on the coat like this. I would probably suggest using a chops bar or something very degreasing around the muzzle and the ears. Or put some baby powder before you bathe the dog in the dry, dirty coat. Work it in and then wash it off. You will have a much, much more separated, clean and degreased coat if you do that. Uh, same thing on the body fluff out against the grain, separate the coat, and when you clipper, brush backwards once, spray, and then clipper, you will get a much more even and smooth haircut. 
um, symmetry, shape, balance is there. If you get that prep down and smoother haircut, it would be a very, very cute haircut. Maybe even for a grooming contest somewhere. Next, little red poodle. And that is the only picture we have of that red poodle, right? Nice, cute face. A little asymmetrical, but I like the face very much. Uh, I'm going to say the same thing about the coat. It's not prepped properly for this haircut to look smooth. That's all I have to say. Otherwise, the haircut is there. It's cute teddy bear. It is a really cute, popular haircut. But you guys, if you prep these coats for these haircut properly and correctly, it would look so much more and so much different. It would look fluffed out, smooth, velvety. You would not see clipper marks. I could even see unevenness all over the body too. That's because the coat is not standing out for you to cut even. So proper prep, cute face. All right, so I think this is a doodle. I gotta say those back feet look really nice. They're clean and scissored nicely. The front is kind of shaggy, but the shape is all the same. They're all symmetrical and shape and size is the same. I gotta say that. It's all even. I could see a little bald spot behind the elbow, but I'm not sure if it was there before or not. And if it was, then whatever that is, I'm not gonna mention. If you went there just a little too close on the pink skin, then watch out for that, be careful. And it looks to me like, and I could see that he, ha he hates his ears dried and use either Happy Hootie or wrap the head and towel to blow dry as much as he will tolerate. Uh, and I could see the ears are wet. I get it. But if those ears are already that short and you can't dry them because he's not letting you, why don't you just take a five blade to those ears, make him real short. So you don't have to dry this, these ears with the dryer. And as you're grooming the dog, the ears are gonna air dry. Then you can put a little bit of a brush on the ears and it will look much better than getting the dog out to the owner with wet ears. So I would just talk to the client and suggest something like that. I think it'll look real cute with five blade on the ears instead of not being able to dry them. Otherwise, it's a nice pet haircut that comes out of the shop and the owner would probably really like it. But that's my suggestion on the ears that are not, the dog is not tolerating drying the ears, just get the hair off. You don't need to have the hair. All right, guys, so um, I've looked at a few grooms. Some of them are good, some of them not so much. But what I would suggest to you right now, Groom House has an absolute genius webinar that's called Put Your Steps. What's the name again? Put some prep in your step. Put some prep in your step. Mother <laughs> Sometimes the difference between a badass beautiful haircut and you working on the dog for hours and can't get it right is the prep. So that webinar has every little trick and every little way of get each and every coat to the best prep condition for you to cut it. And that's how that haircut comes out, either choppy and uneven or smooth and beautiful and fluffy and even. So think about it. If you get to that point, one, you're more satisfied with your work. Two, your client is more satisfied with your work. Three, you can charge more money. Four, it's just all around better situation. So hope that webinar and all these critiques help you guys. Thank you.